Hello and welcome to the next video in the Project Maelstrom Productions video series. I'm Joseph Lutafina, aka JJ Maelstrom. And though I know I must be wary, still I venture someplace scary. Ghostly hauntings. I let loose. Beer juice, beer juice, beer juice. Yes, indeed. I am talking about the classic cartoon based on the hilariously funny movie Beer Juice, produced by Tim Burton. This show is amazing. It's funny, creative, and a good introduction to the goth culture for little kids. It's creepy, it's kooky, it's altogether spooky. This show is a cornerstone of my childhood, and I definitely recommend to anyone that wants to see it. And with me, I have two friends of mine that are um, definitely not hint to what I will be covering this year in for, for my uh, thing on Halloween in 2017. So, hello guys. Anyway, this cartoon is definitely a, um, a very good TV show, not only for the characters, but it's also a very good introduction to the whole Beetlejuice mythos, which, by the way, I'm sure that, uh, Beetlejuice 2 is going to be, um, not as good as the original, but, um, yeah. I'm hoping it'll be good. Anyway, um, this show is also a sequel to the classic 1988 movie of the of the same name. I'm not sure if Tim Burton had anything to do with this, but it's pretty good. Very creepy. Very his style. Anyway, um. There are some very uh, interesting differences between this movie and the show and the cartoon. First of all, the cartoon is very um, kids friendly. It's not very, it's not very disgusting or gross or anything like that. It's more on the comedic side of things. Second of all, Bill Dude is actually best friends with Lydia, they, I guess to get rid of the whole, the whole Paul point of, um, you know, him marrying her to become part of the living world. Another thing is that they, um, also made Beetlejuice into more of a, more of a goose with magical powers rather than a zombie with magical powers in the, in the movie. <coughs> And also, we also get a good, um, tie-in with the movie for those who haven't seen it, by her singing the, by Lydia singing the Dale song. And that's about it. If you expect to see the Maitlands in this show, you know, Gene and David, not a Bowen, you shall look, because there are no Maitlands in this show. And also, for the same matter, um, Lydia keeps referring to Beetlejuice, or BJ as he's known for short. Kind of, kind of odd though, that the little girl is calling the character BJ. But that's just my adult mind thinking of a cartoon and stuff. Even though she referred to BJ as Mr. Beetleman or BJ to her parents, 
even though clearly in in the movie we just saw the copyright by the way we see that they they are aware of real Jews and his magical power and, and and such like that. Plus his desire to marry had the daughter but that's beyond the point. So it's kinda like a parallel universe thing where some events happened and some didn't I guess. So they pretty much left in the dark about all of this stuff. Even though Charles the father is mostly uh, taken by surprise by Beatrice's antics and pranks and uh, and that uh, Delia is more of a like um how should I put this? More of a um uh, she's not aware of it so much and she's more of a like a I'm looking at her head to the whole uh, hauntings and the magic and stuff like that. But the Eugene is by far one of the best golf girls in, in the world, in the world of animation at least. Because in this cartoon, she's more of a, a standalone character than in the movie. Because in the movie, I'm going to be doing this eventually one day too, but uh, in the movie, she's more of a stereotype than anything else. Like, um, you know, the whole depressed, uh, the depressed stereotype of the goth girl, I want to kill myself, you know, depressing and sad music and all that stuff. But in this cartoon, she's much better because... Not only does she remind me of a very close friend of mine, but she's very, um, number one, pretty. Number two, she got more of a personality other than, you know, I want to kill myself in life and meaningless and all that other stuff, too. So, she's very, um, she's very, um, you know, flushed out and all that. No, no pun in that, not a whole dead thing either. But, um, <clears throat> she ends up living in, like, a rural-type, uh, North Con uh, Connecticut-esque, uh, yeah, area in, uh, Connecticut. It's very quiet, very plain, and very boring. She has two friends, which are not featured in the movie, called, um, um, Prudence and, uh, and, um, Bruce and, um, Beatrice, something, something like that. I know one of them in Prudence. Anyway, She's, uh, she, and she's always bullied by this character called, um, uh, Clay Brewster, voiced by, uh, Clara, by, uh, Tara Strong of My Little Pony Recognition, among many, many others. But, um, the, the, the real world is real drab and boring and slow, but when she said that mystical chant that she does, she gets transported into the uh, neither world, which is basically the land of the dead, where all of it would be loose and his neighbors all reside, including the very, um, very uh, strange character that we've seen from the movie, the guy that had his head shrunken, the character, um, <coughs> the characters of, um, <coughs> I think his name was Jacques, Jacques which is basically a skeleton, that, a French skeleton that works out, a, a, a tap dancing spiraling 
uh, ginger, as well as, um, um, who else is there? There's a character in there that's uh, like a TV host, like my TV, but that we done in CGI. I don't know if they gave him an, an, a character name or anything, but he's the only character that's actually CG in this whole thing. I don't know why, but he just is. And they also have, um, they also have, um, what I think is, um, personification of what Donald Trump looked like as a ghost. And then be lip, lip scum, which is pretty much a gigantic mouth with feet. It, that's about it. Because, as we all know, Donald Trump has a very, very, very big mouth and a very annoying temper. This reminds me of this guy that's obsessed with reading called, um, the TV monitor. Anyway, um, as well as my personal favorite, my personal favorite, the monster across the street. A uh, monster across the street. Now this character is um, he is basically a cross between um, Gossamer from the. Uh, Looney Tunes cartoons, remember the Frankenstein monster thing there? And, um, Yosemite Sam. He, the, all of them are funny. Uh, all of them get annoyed by, uh, Beardjuice's pranks. Because he's the ghost with the most. And he pranks everybody. Which is the dismay. There are two things that he fears in this world, in the neither world. One of dead. That being, um, <clears throat> Sandworms, which carries over from the movie. As well as his mother. <laughs> not, not mother-in-law, but mother. That's a kind of funny day, too. I think that it's very funny that a goose would even be afraid of his mother. <clears throat> but I think only that Lydia was able to scare him, scare her with, with the mother. Now, um, we also meet his father and his, we also see what he looks like as a ghost form, you know, as a baby form. So would that mean that he died as a baby, or they were born as, dead as a baby? Or did that mean that he just died when he was a baby? That's kind of odd to see that in a kid show. Now, I gotta admit, that with the... With, with the portrayal of neither world in the show, it was actually quite unique. A lot better than in the movie because in the movie it was just seen as like a drag, boring, um, you know, rank and file bureaucracy type thing. Unfortunately, it didn't involve the guy that was attacked by a shark. There's no Juno, no, um, receptionist. I think. That there was the character that was ran over by a truck, and so did the transportation in the uh, in the biography place. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I'm not sure about that. And there are, of course, creepy, cl creepy clowns in the, in the this one. I think I forgot the names of them, but they have like a. Uh, part in a road race, which they're kind of like rivals to Beardews. Anyway, um, that was one of the more notable episodes of this show, where they would, um, where they would have, um, 
a road race, I guess, and you'll need a world uh, road race. And another one was, um, where, um, Leah and the girl, and the girl wanted to sort like, I, uh, uh, fashion line, so they started, like, with gothic and creepy type stuff, kind of like with, um, that one, uh, Spencer's or, um, Hot Topic, they, they start, like, one of those type of things, and it's funny because, um, <clears throat> Leah had poor business at first until um until um you just advertise on TV shop till you forget the spooky the spooky boutique. And it it's just, it's just funny because um Miss Shannon which also is another character from the movie it's like a it's like a um Catholic school for girls and stuff. She, they all stop buying it from her. You know, they stop following it and they keep saying, it's up to you, freak at the spooky boutique. To the point in which she says, um, one of her other catchphrases, deadly voo. I don't know if that means it in French, but it's deadly voo. So, um, I would, I would say that this show is a definite plus. The whole mythos of, um, you know, Beelgeet and stuff. I like the architecture and the design of the Nether world, being that it was, um, I don't know if it was supposed to be on Siren, because that's where the same limbs come from, in the movie at least. And, um, it's like, um, You got the main world, the main nether world where everyone lives, and then you got um below that you have like the, the pit of um like the same world, the same room, world zone and stuff. So it's kind of funny. It's because 